Okie doke. So we are going to get started with our first couple of drawings here in our technical drawing unit. For these, we are going to draw them on graph paper and then using our computer, we're going to take pictures of them and post them to our portfolio like we learned on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, for this though, I wanted to talk about just some things we expect when we are drawing on graph paper. The first thing, I'm breaking my own rule here, but we would like you to always use a pencil. I am using a pen just so y'all can see really clearly through the camera, um, but I would definitely use a pencil if I were you, just so that way you can make corrections and fix mistakes as we go along. Also in your supply bag, everyone got a ruler. So we absolutely want you to use this whenever you are drawing on graph paper. And that's for two reasons. Reason number one is we're gonna have you actually measure things. And that's why we have the rulers, that's what they're for. Reason number two is because when we are drawing things, we want to represent them as their truest shapes. So that means we want nice straight lines when we are drawing things like rectangles and squares. So when we use a ruler, it gets us this nice, clean, crisp line. We love it. If we don't use a ruler, we get squiggly, wiggly lines, and we don't love to see those. Partially because, especially if they are going off on some angle like this, uh, it doesn't give us the most accurate representation of the object that we are viewing. And since this is how we are going to share our ideas for our inventions and designs in the future, we want to make sure that we're being effective communicators and accurately portraying our designs and ideas. So the first thing that we are going to take a look at uh, is what is going to go on slide number six of our portfolio. And as you look at your portfolio, you'll notice that slide number six is of a full scale drawing. So when we see a full scale drawing, essentially what this means is that the drawing that we create is going to be the actual size of the real life object. So we're going to draw this Lego right here and you'll notice that our drawing at the end will be the exact size and shape of this Lego. In order for us to do this, first thing we gotta do is measure out our Lego. So I promise that I am holding the Lego at the zero mark on our ruler. It just looks a little bit funky because of the parallax error of our camera. But this is where our Lego ends. So taking a moment to measure that and thinking to yourself, how long is this Lego? For those of you who said that it's one and one quarter inch, you are exactly correct. I'm going to write that out just as a reminder to myself so I remember when I go to draw it. Since I have got my ruler here and I'm measuring things anyways, let me go ahead and measure the other dimension of my Lego. Again, I'm sorry that it will look a little bit funky on the zero end, but I promise this is the correct measurement for the width. So reading our ruler to that little right there, how wide is our Lego? For those of you who said five eighths of an inch, you are exactly correct. We can count this out starting from the zero line, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sixteenths, which we recognize is an improper fraction, so we gotta reduce it, and that becomes five eighths of an inch. Once we know our measurements, we can actually start to measure out on our graph paper and draw things. Now we know that our graph paper is quad ruled. That means that every four boxes is one inch. So we had one, two, three, four, that's an inch right there. So for a one and one quarter inch, I could count out or I could measure out. So if I'm starting right there on my zero line, I could measure 
to one and one quarter inch. I could even count one, two, three, four, five boxes is one and one quarter inch. So I can double check myself. I know that that is correct. And then using my ruler, I can draw a nice crisp straight line. So that's where we start. For our 5 eighths of an inch, for our other dimension, this one we won't be able to count the boxes on our graph paper, so we do have to rely on our measuring skills. So I'm going to line up the zero line of my root with the line that I've already drawn and find that 5 eighths inch mark. Me personally, I like to make dots and connect them. I am an adult and I still like connecting the dots. That's the method that works best for me. So I've made a dot and I've drawn a nice crisp line that represents that 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to do this on the other side as well. And so for this, again, I just went ahead and counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's where I made my dot. And I recognize now that that was entirely covered up by my hand. I'm sorry. So that's my 5 eighths of an inch. Now that I have those two dots, I can swing back around like this and connect them to get that top line so it is nice and crisp. Again, like we said, it's not going to line up perfectly with the lines on my graph paper, but it should more or less be a rectangle. And since it is a full scale drawing, it is the exact same size as my real life Lego. So I can line those up, exact same size. 